We're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, new topics every day. We are the Thumb Generation. <laughs> Making news just for you. It's February 15th here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Choi Ji Hee. Good morning, Yan, and Park Ki Hoon. Happy Hump Day. Yes, Happy Hump Day. And Ki Hoon, you mentioned a very big hint for our discussion topic of today. And if you're curious, please stay in tune. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. And moving on, we do make a news feed for the new generation every day. Day, we're looking at the top trending hashtags on social media over the past 24 hours. Here they are. The first hashtag is Moon Service. South Korea's unmanned space vehicle, Tanuri, has sent over its first batch of photos. They're pictures of the surface of the moon, and you can see the moon's largest dark spot, also known as the Ocean of Storms. Now, these pictures were taken just 100 kilometers above the moon with a high definition camera. Tanuri will be continuing its lunar mission and research until the end of this year. The orbiter will also be looking for potential landing sites for future lunar missions. The second hashtag is Hong Kong. Hong Kong has launched a global promotional campaign to finally welcome international travelers. Hong Kong was one of the last countries to relax its COVID-19 restrictions, and the campaign dubbed Hello Hong Kong will last six months and will give away 500,000 free air tickets. The tickets will first be distributed to Southeast Asian countries, then the rest of the world. But many in Korea haven't been too excited. Some mentioned how China had recently suspended the issuance of some visas for South Koreans, and some criticized Beijing's crackdown on Hong Kong's efforts for democracy. The last hashtag is suicide. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released recent data on the country's suicide rates. The CDC analysis found that suicide rates increased in 2021. For every 100,000 people, 14.1 died through suicide. Of all age groups, those aged 10 to 24 saw the highest increase. Experts analyzed that this was from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now let's delve a bit deeper into the last hashtag suicide. Unfortunately, South Korea has has the high suicide rate among the OECD nations. As of 2021, 26 people from out of 100,000 died from suicide in Korea. And that's why the Ministry of Health and Welfare has pledged to bring down this notoriously high suicide rate by 30% until the year 2027. Officials presented five key strategies to bring the numbers down. They include expanding the number of suicide prevention centers and mental counseling services to socially isolated elderly and vulnerable teens. It also includes includes intensive monitoring and inspections of places and tools that are used to commit suicide. Also, monitoring people who've been through tragic accidents or disasters for two years afterwards. Police, firefighters and medical institutes have joined hands to create a suicide prevention squad. Now, let's expand the news feed here to the studio. ki what do you think about the government's goal and measures to bring down suicide rates here in Korea? You know, I think it's great to see the Korean government take action on this matter. Um, even though 26 may seem like a very small number, um, South Korea being ranked number one among OECD nations for the wrong reason is obviously a worrying sign. So Definitely. I think it's great that you know the government is taking various measures. Um, and also, as a millennial living in South Korea, um, I think society frames people who get um, kind of consulted for these reasons, like for, like for example, depression, they frame them as mentally ill, sick, and even like kind of crazy people, mm -hmm. which refrain them from seeking professional help. Um, that in turn can kind of build up and force them to take the irreversible choice in life. So I think, you know, let's not worry too much about what other people think about you and use that time and energy into self-care and self-happiness. Definitely, and awareness still needs to be raised on this issue. And Tihi, do you think there's any other suggestions you can make for officials watching our News Gen program? Right, well, just like ki Hoon mentioned, uh, it's very welcoming that the government has introduced these various measures. Uh, however, reducing suicide rate within the country, I think, will need contribution from the public front as well. So meaning uh, the overall social atmosphere really must change in order to address this huge 
problem. And we must be more aware of this notorious number ourselves, and we must put in more interest towards those who are in need of emotional and psychological support. And also schools and corporations, they must care, uh, take better care or personalized care for their students and their employees as well. And we as individuals must also understand that our attention matters too. So I did some research on what we can do to really mm -hmm. prevent or contribute to the uh, reduction of the suicide rates. And I found out that for uh, the prevention of anyone uh, committing suicide or in order to stop them from even thinking about suicides, uh, we can have, they can just have one person around them mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. genuinely cares and loves them. And they have to feel that way in order to uh, not think about suicides. Definitely, and if you don't have any other options, there are many mental counseling mm -hmm. options you can call 15770199. Suicide hotlines are also available at 1393. Counseling is always available 24 7. It's also available online. And that was our news feed for this Wednesday. Moving on, NewsGen discusses different topics each day. And here's what we have for you today. Have you ever read a text or a preview of a message but didn't reply? In English, that's called leaving someone on read. In Korean, it's called ilkship. This is becoming more common among the thumb generation, aka young people who've grown up chatting online and expressing their thoughts or emotions with their busy thumbs, typing away on their phones. Today, NewsGen looks at three questions. One, what's the latest chatting etiquette the young generation are following? Two, why are they doing so? Three, are companies aware of this? How are they responding to this trend? As we just saw, today we're going to be talking about how messaging is evolving among the younger generation. And I would first like to ask you two in the studio, do you guys read and answer chats immediately after you read them? Well, for me, yes, mm -hmm. uh, because with online communication, I think speed is really important. Definitely. And especially when it comes to work-related messages, it's never good to postpone your replies. And for me personally, because I'm a freelancer, I usually receive uh, work-related opportunities through text messages and through group chats. I see. So I have the habit of checking my messages as quickly as possible and also uh, replying to them as soon as possible. And so I leave my important group chats, uh, I never leave them on mute as well, ah. just to make sure that I don't miss out on any of these opportunities. Did you mute your phone right now? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. For now, though. Oh, yes, what for now, I did. For? I did. If I miss an opportunity, that's fine, because this show is an opportunity itself. Oh, oh, very very professional. Yes. Oh, I see. yes, and this could be something I may be more uh, personally irritated with, mm -hmm. but I don't like looking at those um, numbers pop up on your apps, like oh. if you have unread messages. Right. It's like a filled um, inbox, really. Exactly. So I like to get rid of them and yeah. read my messages as quickly as possible. What what about you, Hee-hoon? Um, I do agree with Ji in terms of work-related messages. Um, I try to respond to them as soon as possible because it shows you know, good work ethic. But however, among friends, especially in group chats, I wouldn't stop what I'm doing and read them and get back to them right away. And I also believe if it's an, like any kind of emergency, I'm sure they'll call me. They wouldn't text <laughs> me if something happened, like serious mm -hmm. happened. And I also, I weigh out the level of importance and mm -hmm. believe that my personal time in the reality life is more important than the life I live in the virtual I life, see. in my smartphone. So, you know, I tend to respond in my own free time. Mm -hmm. And are okay, your friends you are okay yeah. with that? My friends? Are you guys okay with me <laughs> not, you know, responding right away? I'm sure they are because I still meet them. <laughs> oh, you have some good friends. I do. What about you, Yeah. For me, I think I totally understand where you're coming from because I am guilty for not <laughs> responding ASAP. But if I do find need to like communicate them, I would actually prefer calling them. Calling, really? Yeah, and that's only because I feel like texting limits you from understanding what that person's really trying to right, say. Right, right, right. Hearing their emotions. Mm -hmm. But when you're calling them, you can hear their voice and uh -huh. hear what they're emotionally trying to reach out to you for. Right, maybe. Why don't you just video call them? <laughs> Vi to see their faces as well, facial emotions. Actually, that's one of my favorite options. Oh, really? <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, no. I love video calling. Wait. That's so <laughs> uncomfortable. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone will feel comfortable receiving video calls, you know? 
they actually, might be in a situation they can. I know, and that mm. is why I think from today I learned from you guys. <laughs> I will not video call you. I will text you guys first and make sure you guys are comfortable. Okay. 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 Thank awesome. You. <laughs> and I think that's what we talked about before telephobia, right. how a lot of youngsters are actually more preferring texting and mm. chatting online. Why is this the case? Well, that's because millennials and the Gen Zs were very familiar uh, with the digital means of communication. And uh, like we mentioned in our phone phobia show mm -hmm. earlier, uh, they really are scared of receiving phone calls because they're really scared of making mistakes once they're on phones. Uh, and with text, you can reduce this risk and you can also take a look at what you want to say to the other person, uh, review it mm -hmm. a, a multiple times before you send it. Right. And you can also take some time to comprehend what the other person has to say to you as well. And all these are recorded mm -hmm. in your group chats or just individual chat rooms as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kihun, but there are still a lot of youngsters that aren't really too quick replying and we call this <laughs> yes we call this asynchronous communication first define what it is and tell us what are some reasons behind this well asynchronous communication uh, means any type of communication where one person provides information and then there's a time lag before the recipient receive, takes it in and re responds I you know see. in their own time so basically it's communication that doesn't happen in real time mm -hmm. for example like over the phone like Chi mentioned face-to-face -face meetings, or even like live video calls <laughs> <laughs> or conferences. Okay, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, but I think, you know, many youngsters uh, feel more comfortable conversing this way because we are the digital generation mm -hmm. and the thumb generation. Mm -hmm. right. And also that's why because a lot of businesses are adhering to this kind of um, communication method for higher efficiency, performance, and, you know, um, transparency. And even our news gen team, right. we use Google Doc to work on our scripts, right. which is an example of going async. And I think it's great because we can work at our preferred time, space, and pace mm -hmm. that could, you know, produce a higher level quality, you know, kind of work. So mm -hmm. I see. And Q, let's go async. I wanted to find out more on why people just leave other people on read or don't respond immediately. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even have to go too far to find these type of people with these chatting habits. They were here in our very own news gen team. So take a look at the screen active in group chats and are you the type to respond immediately once you get a message? Uh, yes, I am. I always try to read and respond to everything because sometimes I feel bad and it's awkward when nobody replies even after checking the message. Mm, I see. So you're okay being involved in many group chats at once? Uh, actually, sometimes it annoys me. So I rather leave the group chat. I just mute it, especially from my you know, workplace. Uh, basically, I don't feel comfortable when my messages uh, pop up on everybody's phones because there might be some who don't really care about my message or someone that I don't like to interact with. And even if I start a conversation in the group chat, I think the conversation is highly likely to go off on a tangent when a lot of people are involved in the conversation or the other way around. Everyone has fixed their attention to my text, but I don't really want that. Right. And I hope our main producer was listening to the last bit where she said, especially if it comes from my workplace, I don't like it. And so please, the main producer, please refrain from chatting us after work hours. And we mean please. it. Oh, we mean it. And actually, he just said, OK. Oh, but yay. I'm not sure if it was like a positive OK. Oh, we'll I'm have scared. to see. All it's right. Like, I'll see you after work. I know. <laughs> Let's have a talk. We will we'll have talk. a talk. And, Tihi, as uh -huh. you can see, our sources asked that they remain anonymous, mainly because they didn't want to be too open about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be leaving people on read and coming off to be quite rude. Right. And I feel like there are some problems with this evolved texting habit, right? Right, right. So with async texting, when it comes to work, when uh, you need people to really reply in real time, it may reduce the work productivity and efficiency. And the person who needs your reply as quickly as possible uh, may feel very frustrated mm -hmm. as well. So with work, async communication can sometimes uh, delay work even, mm -hmm. but it really depends on the type of work because with our team, we use Google Drive, like right. Kihun said, and it's a lot more productive for us because we can work on our uh, scripts and our parts when we have the time to do so, as long as we keep the deadline, right? right. Uh, and also when it comes to communication uh, related to with friends, like other than work, sometimes the 
async communication or texting may leave the other person feeling a little rejected. Right, a little or, left out. Yeah, a little left out or a little feeling bad, really. Mm -hmm. But I guess they will have their own situation. So these are really maybe the negative sides mm -hmm. of async texting uh, when it comes to work and friendship. Right, but on the contrary, there seem to be good points, right? And that's why people keep doing it. Absolutely. Um, the biggest uh, advantage of going async would be you don't have to go out of your way to communicate with another person. And also, we don't have to feel the pressure of being physically present to talk to someone face to face. Now, this might feel less uncomfortable among friends, but in a business setting, when you have to talk to your seniors or like the main producer <laughs> face to face, a lot of youngsters, including myself, feel very like it's very difficult to right. talk to them face to face. and to be able to express everything that we want to say because we, we can and we feel very stressed out. So I think going async um, is very good because it improves personal time, uh, space, and it can be prioritized so that it can foster a better work-life balance. Work-life right. balance and mm. also I think it gives you time to think before Absolutely. you speak. Absolutely, right. Right. And why don't we expand our discussion to include a fellow millennial to talk more about this topic. As we mentioned, we're now going to hear from a fellow millennial, and she majored in psychology. She's here to explain the psychology behind the evolving texting etiquette. It's Brooke Prince. Great to have you here, Brooke. Hi, thank you for having me. Good morning. Now, I hear when you first moved to Korea, you were quite shocked or surprised by our texting speed and culture. Were there any differences in Korea's texting culture compared to other countries you've been in? Oh, yes. Uh, I've been here for about six years, and I would say the biggest culture shock for me was the texting etiquette. Mm -hmm. Now, let me preface this by saying I am not a good texter in either language, <laughs> Korean or English. Uh -huh. um, I tend to prefer face-to-face -face interaction. I get very distracted with my phone, where I'll send a message, I'll set my phone down, do something, and before I know it, for, for a few hours, I've left someone on read. Even when I don't mean to hurt their feelings or anything, that's just sort of my style of texting. But I learned in Korea that that's a big no-no. I've had mm -hmm. Korean friends tell me sort of later in our friendship, you know, Brooke, I wasn't sure you really liked me. I wasn't sure you really wanted to be my friend because of the way you text. So that's something that I have really tried to improve since I've been here. I know that uh, in Korean, we have the bali bali culture, so everything right. is speedy, you know, mm -hmm. and it's also more consistency. So I've noticed Korean communication is pretty much structured around meal times. Mm -hmm. So you'll get questions like, have you eaten breakfast? Have right. you eaten lunch? Have you eaten dinner? That's very different from an English style of texting. So that was another difference. And another major difference I noticed was linguistic in nature. So in English, you can send two or three sentences in one message. In Korean, they'll typically break up even one sentence into <laughs> several different parts. So true. So, yeah. For example, you might have, hey, I just got home and I'm eating lunch. In Korean, that same message would be, hey, I just got home right. and now I'm eating lunch. <laughs> so it, it can be very overwhelming, right? As a graduate student, I started getting added to several group chats with my classmates. And I kid you not, I would look away for 30 seconds, look back to my phone, 100 unread messages. And I would just be so overwhelmed because you have all of these pieces of sentences that you're trying to put together. So as a foreigner, I would say that was the most shocking thing for me. Right, and I think Tihi has another question for you, Brooke. Right, so we've been talking about another texting trend, which is async communication. So if you could speak from a psychology perspective, what are some benefits of async texting? Right, so async communication, as we heard earlier, this is the perfect communication style for me. It's when you can set your phone down or your computer down and you are not obligated to respond right away. And this can actually have some psychological benefits, namely in that it improves your communication skills and your ability to articulate your feelings in a very effective manner. So we've all been in those situations where 
you have a knee jerk reaction, something flies out of your mouth and it's kind of like, oh, I can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Right. Oh no, I just, I just had a foot in mouth moment, right? Where with async communication, you have fewer of those moments because you have time to compose your message, to think about what you want to say. So that can lead to more productive conversation. It can also lead to more productive work days overall. Mm -hmm. So the way that our brains work, we have trouble with something called context switching. So this actually originates from computers. They tend to lag when they have to switch between two unrelated tasks. Similarly, humans tend to lag when we have to switch between two tasks. Mm. So if you're at work trying to work and also respond to your messages, your brain has a really hard time switching and it's very hard to get into that work groove. So one of the major benefits of async communication, in addition to improving your personal relationships, is it can also make you more productive at work. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Brooke. It was a pleasure to hear from you and also learn about the psychological traits behind this evolving texting trend. Thanks, Brooke. Of course, thank you for having me. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, all right, given that we are a live morning program, we always ask our viewers questions related to our discussion topic in advance, and we use this time to share with you what they had to say. So we asked our viewers what they think is good texting etiquette. And Murray the Wonderlust said, no texting during a meal because it's, unless it's absolutely urgent. What annoys her is when you're texting back and forth with someone and they just suddenly disappear. Yolanda says, what annoys me is to be left read but not get a reply. It's better to not open the messages at all than to open them and ignore them. Open the messages when you're free and are able to respond. Graciela Novoa says no texting during meals, class, in the theater, cinema, and so on. Now, every day we do upload questions for our viewers to join in our discussion topic. And if you want to join, just please search Arirang News on YouTube and look into our community tab. The link is actually available right below. Now, we've already come to the final part of our discussion for today. And very briefly, I would like to ask you, Chihi, do you hope that this async communication changes in the future. Well, with work-related texts, I hope that the new generation will reply quicker, quickly, more quickly to these mm -hmm. work-related texts. But when it comes to other text messages, we should really respect their style of texting more as well. Definitely. It's all about respecting other people's right. time and all their styles of different texting. All right. And today we talked about the evolving texting and online chatting etiquette among the new gen. We'll be here every day from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you the topics that young people are talking about. Special thanks to Che Ji Hee. Thank you. And Pak Ki Hoon. Thank you for having me. And thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.